if you're getting into machining, um, I'll tell you one thing that you're really going to want to have is some files, uh, some good files. I think they're called long cut files. Uh, they remove material a lot faster than uh, your typical file, but they're really nice. Uh, and then also these are pretty cool there. Let's see if I can get you to, man. They're called rifler files and they have curves that won't focus. Yeah, they're curved so you can get into tighter spots um, and you get a whole set of them. All different shapes and sizes and they're pretty nice. I strongly considered just editing this out, but uh, I decided this might help somebody. It's a simple mistake. I was just busy with the cameras and stuff, but when you have two pieces in the vise like this, it's very important that you use a softer material in between the vise and your parts that will allow for any movement in the, the moving jaw on the vise. This is aluminum TIG rod. It works just fine. What it does is basically squishes down against the steel so you have plenty of surface contact no matter what the jaw is doing. I use paper just because it's lower profile. But if you do that, you won't run into that problem. Okay, we're getting real close here, so stick my pens in here and um, take a measurement. Okay, so about six thousandths to go. I'm gonna take three thousandths off each side. One, two, and the one that ended up a little short for some reason. Three. This is a tapping head. It's a Tapmatic 50X. It's for power tapping. You can, uh, it has a clutch in it so you can tap on your power and don't have to worry about breaking your tap. Let me know if you're interested. I'll make a whole video on that guy.
this one last shot of the tool holders before I, I inflict the inevitable loss of luster that comes from the necessary rust preventative measures I'm about to take. They turned out pretty good, uh, all things considered. It only took me six hours and a shot full of tools, talking to myself. But now I've got three steel rectangles that I could have bought for 150 bucks. They're all things you might want to consider before taking on this venture. It is a fun project. We're gonna gun blue these parts for rust prevention. And it, if it comes out good, which it never does, it looks pretty cool too. And the other good thing about it is it's, it doesn't add like a measurable thickness to your part. So for something like this where we need it to slide in the dovetails, if you're putting on a paint that's you know a 32nd of an inch thick or something, that could potentially hurt your, your fit. Uh, the other thing, you wanna get them pretty clean. I didn't put any chemical on these or anything. I've had gun blued parts where uh, the fingerprint is permanently on the part because you gun blued over it. And one thing that's pretty important with this stuff, uniformity of the finish. Uh, you know, good or bad, however the gun blue takes, if it's uniform, at least it'll take the same on all the parts. And that's one reason why I use the surface grinder. Uh, you could just be a better machinist than me too. That would also help. So like I said, fully submersing the parts tends to help. But then again, you know, this was the smallest container I could find. It's a lot of gun blue. Hopefully you guys can see this. I'll still kind of, you know, brush it around with a brush. This is just a little, um, it's a little brush, I don't know. Uh, <laughs> a little paintbrush would work or something. But just to get it in all the nooks and crannies. Uh, and then I flip it and make sure, you know, the other side's good where it was sitting against the plastic container. Uh, whey oil, it's, it's what everybody seems to use. It's the Mobile Vactra, what is it, two? And I just kind of put this on here. And I just kind of let this sit on here for a minute and then I'll wipe it all off once I get them.